Hello everybody, this is Tyler. Welcome back to the Tyler Podcast Redux. I am joined only just by the Water Pumpkin today. Water is up, everyone. Yep, so this is the episode for January 2024. Now, there was no episode for November or December of 2023 because I was busy with other stuff and some motivational loss, but we're back with this series and we're going to be covering topics that range from November to this month. So, yeah, how do you feel about that, Pumpkin? Or water? I, I, at least we are getting into the big topics that happened at the last two months. Right. So today we're going to discuss Help 1 and 2, the Into the Pit game, Scott confirming the canon of the books, and clarifying Doug, the FNAF Plus AI shit show, FNAF Survival Crew, and Map Hat retiring. So yeah. <coughs> and we're going to start off with Help 1 and 2, which is the most recent, as of recording this, this is the, is the most recent FNAF game to release, coming out in December, December something, 2023. <laughs> Forget the exact date, but yeah, December of 2023 was the release of the sequel to FNAF VR Help 1 and Yeah. Yeah. So, um, personally, I haven't played the game. Oh, you go. Personally, it's my favorite game in the whole FNAF series <laughs> as a current life. I loved it. I play. I got to play it. Um, I still need to get the second ending. But um, yeah. <laughs> what do you think of it, Smart Pumpkin? I haven't played it yet because no one I know has a P uh, a VR headset too, if I recall. Mm. But from what I saw from Daco's uh, playthrough, it does look really fun. I'm pretty sure like the L chips, the Help B, and the Care Attendant mini games look really fun. Yeah, like I I enjoyed basically almost every single mini game or game or level in the game. Even the ones that I've seen people kind of complain about. No, because my thing with Help 1 and 2 is like, one of my things with it is like, it heavily improves a lot of sister location. Private Room is more fun, Blora Gallery is more fun, Breaker Room is more fun and terrifying. This like, it basically improved, and then there was like more Private Room stuff. It genu genuinely was like a solid remaster when it comes to the sister location side of things. And the original stuff in the game too was also like pretty fun. I liked the um, like makeup stuff for the staff bot and <laughs> Roxanne. Oh yeah, <laughs> that reminds me. Remember in September where I said I hope we get a, a close scene with Roxy? Yeah, I think that made a lot of people excited. Yeah, but I can't little, believe I actually predicted that. A too excited. <laughs> but um, yeah, um. As well, the El the um making food ones like El Chips in the theater was all like pretty cool too. Fizzy Faz though was like I liked it, but it was fucking hard. <laughs> it was the I heard races. that it's hard. Oh, it is. By night five, it is so hard. But I was somehow able to do it. There's like certain strategies and shit. Thankfully, that you can follow. Um. I think, just, I think I'm already. I think I'm too late to say this, but spoilers. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, we're gonna get some hate comments for this one. <laughs> but um, yeah. The models look better. Some people say Ender's original model from Help One and One is better than the Help One and Two model. I, I disagree. I still hate how he's still missing that one eyebrow. Yeah, and that's like a consistent error though. I think even in sister location itself, I think the extra is, to my memory, I think it's also that way as well. It could be wrong. I also recently found out, like, after Help Wanted 2 release, I found out that Help uh, Funtime Freddy's uh, models is missing, like, the pink uh, accents around his eyes. Oh yeah, I did hear slash see about that. And that is... I see that my thing is is like I don't really care if like it's missing like a few like details as long as it's mostly accurate and looks good at least I don't really care. It's at least they brought back a uh, fun time phrase uh, shininess. Yeah, 
And speaking of bringing back, they brought back fucking Yendo and Bonnet and Pigpatch and all these characters. I was I was I going to mention this earlier. I was really happy that Yendo came back. Yeah, like his Yendo is barely like focused on in like sister location. He has an Easter egg in base game, and then he's like an easy ass character to deal with in custom night. They actually did more with him by ver now they did they only just did replace Funtime Freddy in Breaker Room hard with like Yendo and that was it. But like it still gives the character more screen time. And Yendo still kinda serves as a mystery in sister location, so Yendo's not that bad of a character, honestly. And um I also like how in Help One and Two they decided to group Funtime Chica with the Fun Times and not with the Pizza Sim gang. Yeah, that's also one thing. It gives her, it makes her feel like she's part of the group more instead of like the posh pizzeria. Yeah. Thing. Part of me starts to feel, part of me is like starting to feel like that because of stuff like this. It makes me convinced that Funtime Chica is the um, suit in Night Force's relocation. But that's a whole other debacle. Speaking of, I love how people thought Night 4 sister location was going to be in Help 1 and 2. I thought so too, because I heard uh, someone behind the war game was uh, mentioned that. Well, no, basically they mentioned something about like Night 4 or some shit on Twitter, and people thought that was a hint for sister location in Night 4. <laughs> and then they got people worried, but thankfully though, it doesn't exist. I don't even know how that'd work in VR. I really don't know how that works. I can just just shrunk. That's what you do. You shrink. Yeah. Imagine a hard mode of that too. No. <laughs> oh yeah, another mini game I really liked in Help One and Two was the daycare attendant one with like or son one with like the yeah. There's a lot of daycare attendant ones. I mean like the one with like painting stuff and cutouts with sun and then eventually like moving in the hard mode. That shit was cool. And Carousel was something, too, with Moon. That was, like, intense. It, hold on, I got a question for you, Tyler. Yes. Are you the one who was nice or an asshole to Helpy? What do you mean? You know how, like, some people they care for Helpy in the Helpy minigame, and there's the oh. other side that just beats the shit out of him? With the hammer? Yeah. Yeah, I beat him with a hammer. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm just like that. <laughs> I love Helpy, but he needs to... I want some Helpy comedy, man. And speaking of those levels, those levels, like, for some reason, got me, like, doing them for more than 20 minutes because I was, like, dropping shit and couldn't find shit. Like, I, like, I lost the hammer at one point. No, I lost the remote at one point, and so I, like, I had to restart the game. <laughs> Speaking of, I my one of my only criticisms with Help One and Two is I wish there was like a bit more characters on the Pizza Sim side, like Molten Freddy, even Scrap Trap, and then like um more of the Rock Stars. I don't even think I think Lefty was like Lefty and technically Carney were like the only Rock Stars in the game. I was going to mention, I would like to see Scrap Trap and Molten Freddy maybe appear in the rumored DLC. Yeah. I had a, I feel like maybe because of Burn Trap and Blob, they didn't include Scrap Trap and Molten Freddy, but like, that doesn't make sense. It's like, they have entered! So, I don't know. Also, what do you think of Carney? I like Carney, honestly. Same. I don't Carney know why. He's probably the best out of like the new characters in Help 1 and 2. The other one that I can think of being Mystic Hippo. Well, there's also uh, Jacko Moon. Oh yeah, and Jacko Moon as well. He, Jacko Moon is a cool design. Mystic Hippo, and again, I don't like how her thing is like exclusive to like PlayStation. Because I, okay, I played on Oculus Quest with like Cable Link and stuff. That's how I was able to play it with like my friend. Um, and like PlayStation, has like exclusive for Mystic Hippo for her thing actually works. I don't like that because I am curious what she, like her stuff is about. I remember when people thought Mystic Hippo was trans too, like a trans Mr. Hippo. 
Do you still believe that? No, I just see her more as a headcanon, like a real relative to Mr. Hippo. Yeah, I'm starting to... Now, I will still believe that Glamrock Freddy and Glamrock Bonnie are a thing, but... Trans, oh yeah, that's, that's real. Trans Hippo... I don't know, Chief. It'd be cool, but I, I don't think it's... I think it's a family member. I'm sorry. Don't kill me. <laughs> um... But yeah, Candy Cadet also returns and like does the same thing he did in Ruin and Pizza Sim, where like if you pay him, he'll tell you hints to the game lore. That was cool. What do you think of Candy Cadet's return? Well, in Ruin, I was really happy because he was one of my favorite characters in uh, Pizza Sim. But when he returned and helped Wanted too, I was like, oh, cool. Yeah. As well, um, I also like how um, Princess Quest was like somewhat adapted into VR with Princess Quest 4. Yeah, that was also cool. Is every FNAF game gonna have Princess Quest? Watch as the Into the Pit game has Princess Quest. <laughs> Actually, speaking of which, did you hear that Fanny got uh, cut it again? That what? That... In the got... files, for help. Fanny got in... cut. Oh, sort of. Like, there were files found in the game where Fanny had more lines, apparently. Oh my god, dude. Fanny is just so un... It's just the... It's just the case... It's just it's still the biggest case of this potential. Okay, I love Help 1 and 2 for the gameplay and stuff, but, like, come on. Really? With, like, Fanny? Yeah, she has a cool design, too. Yeah. Like, Fanny's cool. Like... Besides, like, her appearances themselves. Like, you could have done something. Like, she's a cool concept, if you know what I mean. But they don't. Yeah, they don't do much with her. And I'm just like, do more. They, they, I know, like, Afton was kind of vague, too, but, like, he had more to do than Fanny. But, yeah. Um. I wonder what the DLC for Help 1 and 2 will be like. Uh, my, my, I have a feeling it could be a Halloween DLC, mainly because of Help 1 and 1, but who knows. Maybe it's maybe it's the, the carnival thing people were talking about. Oh yeah, that thing from... It's a Sim and Help Wanted, sort of. Yeah. And we still need those carnival characters for the merch. <laughs> Yes, I. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. I still don't know if they were made for merch or they're meant to be a, for a thing or not. I. I just think they're just for merch. Which is just. <laughs> I do like Circus Bonnie's design though. Yeah, I'd kill to see this. Someone should make like a perfect. Like I said before, someone should make a professional like FNAF fan game with those characters. If like they're not going to be used for anything official. As I. And like, and I don't mean just some like basic shitty fan game with them. I mean like a genuine, like actual quality FNAF fan game with those characters. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Is there anything else you want to say about Help One and Two? Yes. If I could predict that I, we were gonna get an up close shot with Roxy. I'm gonna predict that Monty will appear in the DLC. Mm, yeah, maybe. Because he didn't appear at all in the game. Yeah, what the hell? I thought Monty... I, Monty, like, appears briefly in, like, the Bonnie Bowl TVs and stuff, but, like, that's it. And there is files of Monty in the game, as his yeah. own minigame, but that got scrapped. Yeah, what the hell? Like, Monty is one of the more popular glam rocks, so it's, like... Why would that? Why is that? Why is this happening? Glamrock Chica gets more focused than Monty, and I, I see more Monty fans than Glamrock Chica fans. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, it's just. It's unfortunate because, like, Monty. Monty's a cool character. I do. I really like Monty. Honestly, he should, he's like the number one character I w wished he was in the game, and not like. Um, like, because I know people ask for Molten Freddy and Scrap Trap, but like, Monty, man. 
Hell, Glamrock Bonnie kind of had more of a focus than Monty, and it was like a small focus. Because at least Bro got a minigame, even if him physically himself doesn't appear. Oh, there's one more thing I forgot to mention. I actually like the idea of Funtime Freddy being like the face of Help Wanted 2. Yeah, again. that was cool. Yeah, since Funtime Freddy is my second favorite animatronic, I think it's really cool to see him in a face again since sister location, kind of. Yeah. Another thing with Help Wanted 2 is like, Half of the games are scary, but like half of the others are just meant to be fun. And some people take issue with that, but me personally, as long as the gameplay is fun, I don't really care if it's scary or not. It just depends on gameplay. Yep. Like, like gameplay is like the most important thing to me for like any game I play. So, if it has good gameplay, I'm gonna like it, and Help Wanted 2 has good gameplay, so I like it. <laughs> now, because another thing, too, we should probably bring up, people care more, obviously there's FNAF fans that care more about the lore than the gameplay, which people have taken issue with the lore of Help Wanted 2 for either not, for just not telling too much or whatever. But, like, I think it's clear that, like, Steel intended Help Wanted 2 to be a gameplay prioritized game. It was like you saw how Security Breach turned out. Security Breach was panned for its gameplay, so like they, f so decided, hey, we need to do better with the gameplay for Help One and Two. So they did, and then people still could play about the lore. It's always about the lore. Yeah, and I'm just like. I know I'm like nowadays I don't mind the FNAF lore, I actually quite like it because and I like the mimic and stuff, but it's not everything to the series. It, like I know it's a big part of the series, that's why people like it, but they're games. They <laughs> if they're not good if there's not good gameplay, there's like it's like it's flawed. It's a flawed game. And FNAF VR Help Wanted 2 was ultimate proof to me that Steel Wool does better with VR games than regular games because help, both Help Wanted are like really good, but then like Security Breach is like mid. And my personal hot take for a second, I think Ruin is mid, so it's like. And by the way, I need to clarify, I don't think mid means bad, by the way. Like, I'm not one of those people that thinks mid is the same thing as bad. Mid literally means mediocre to me like it's supposed to be. So I'm not even saying okay. Security Breach and Ruin are bad. I just think they're in the middle. For me, I think mid means like middle. Like in the middle. Yeah, same. That's that's how it's supposed to be. Like one of my biggest pet peeves, like especially online, is when people misuse mid. Like they use it to mean bad or something when it's like meant to be okay or middle or mediocre or meh or eh. Like, that's hot. Like, to me, okay, mediocre, meh, eh, and mid are the same, are like synonyms, or the same thing to me. But there's also mix, sort of. And mixed, yeah. Mixed is, is in that category, so. And so, yeah. So, I'm not even saying that Security Breach and Ruin are bad. I just think they're okay, but like, um, Steel Wool clearly does better with VR titles, and. Help wanted to was the ultimate proof for me that yes, they are better with VR titles because Help Wanted 2 was genuinely and I dare I say objectively was like a really good game. I know it may not be like some people say like it's recency bias, but I genuinely do believe Help Wanted 2 is like a really good game when it comes to gameplay. Yeah, it's like I haven't no, had. I haven't had this much fun with a, like a FNAF game in a long time. That's how like that's how much I enjoyed. Um, that's how much I enjoyed Help Wanted Two. Yeah. Yeah. Help Wanted Three. <laughs> yeah. Nah, nah, that won't be for like a while. If they they have to like release more FNAF games, I'm never gonna do that. <laughs> Do you know what, like, a minigame I was from Sister- You know a section from Sister Location I was surprised that wasn't in Help 1 and 2? Oh, wait, uh... 
we talking about parts and surface? I mean, that could be one, but no, I'm referring to the uh, under the desk with Biddy Bab. I think that'd be like kind of cool to do. Oh yeah. And yeah, Parts and Service with a Funtime Freddy would have been interesting too. And they obviously can't do Funtime Foxy's like beat Flash Beacon because they did that in Help One and One. But um, yeah. It's clear that like they had like enough ideas to the point where they can't just update Help One and One or whatever, so they just made it they made their a second game if they made its own game. Which hey, power to them. As long as they have good ideas. There you go. <laughs> yeah. People expecting a fucking narrative too, even though it's like mini games. It's, it's always been mini game collection. And honestly, that's like really fun for me. I like mini game collections like that. No, for the longest it's... time before Security Breach came out, I thought Security Breach was gonna be like somewhat of a mini game collection while having a narrative at the same time. But... Maybe, maybe as well as VR titles, and maybe that's what Steel was also best at, just like minigame collections, like short bits of gameplay pieces. Like a Mario Party. Yeah, like Mario Party. It's like, I don't, th I, it's like, they could probably do narratives, like, like, Security Breach and Ruin, like, narrative-driven games, like, linear, but they just need to, like, heavily improve on it. It's like, they need, but the thing is, they need more gameplay, that's the thing. Because going back to Security Breach and Ruin, Security Breach like is just walking simulator, and Ruin is kind of the same thing, but it has like repetitive mechanics that do not progress in terms of challenge, so it's like still boring. So like I think as long as they improve the gameplay, I think a game like Security Breach could work from a from like like an engagement perspective. Now lore wise, that's a whole other can of worms that I'm not gonna get into. But if they improve the gameplay, then I think they could, Steel Wolf could successfully make a narrative slash linear driven FNAF game. Like they tried to do with Security Breach. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I understand what you mean. Yeah. Anyway, is there anything else you want to say about Help 1 and 2? Because I can't think of anything else. <laughs> Hold on, let me think of something. Oh, I just thought of something. Uh, you go first. Uh, Funtime Freddy, uh... Hold on. Funtime Freddy, Bonbon, bon, go get him. That's all I, I have to say. <laughs> yes. Bonbon! Uh, bon. It's giving a surprise. Anyway, I did think of something. The marketing for Help 1 and 2 was kind of uh, doo-doo, honestly. Yeah, I have to agree because I thought it would be bigger because of the movie. Yeah, but like, you think? Okay, this may be a hot take, but I feel like they should have waited till the ten-year anniversary for FNAF to release Help One and Two. Because I think the, when Help One and Two was like released, it was still when people were talking about the FNAF movie, and people still kind of are talking about the FNAF movie. So it's like, I think they should have waited for like ten years for Help One and Two. Now some people are are saying that fucking FNAF and Fortnite is going to be the 10 year anniversary special as long as along with Into the Pit game, but Into the Pit game is confirmed to be 10 year anniversary celebration. But you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I think they should have waited to for like a, a day like that, or when the FNAF movie hype died down to release really something one too. Is there also wasn't a lot of promotional material either? And another thing too was it wasn't really it's not that accessible. Most people have their most people haven't even played the game. They've just watched like Markiplier or Daco or whoever play it, and they and that's how some people form their opinion on the game, and like how like focus on the lore and stuff. Because they haven't played it. Help One and Two is like a game that you need to play to like actually enjoy it. So yeah, if they ain't playing it, they ain't getting like the experience that I had, I had, or other people that played it had. Yeah, that, that's why I can't really say my full opinion yet, because I haven't played it, but I will say it does look fun. Yeah. That's all I can say. Yeah, it is pretty fun. <laughs> and like... Yeah, I feel like it should just be more accessible. Like, it should have been like... On, it's on like PlayStation VR and like Quest 3. It should have been put on like... Not Quest 3. 
It should be put on Quest, especially like Quest 2 and stuff. It should be put on like, like all other Oculus stuff. It, like, it should be more accessible. And then like, I know like they're working on flat mode, which is coming in spring. And they're also releasing the official Quest port without cable link in the spring. But like, I feel like they should have had all this stuff like upon launch so people could play. Even even though flat mode is obviously going to be inferior because that's how it was with the first game, first Help Wanted, I still think it would have been allowed people more people to play it, so therefore they get experience. Although it's better experience than VR, so I don't know how much of a difference that would make. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But all around though, Help Wanted 2, currently my favorite FNAF game. I had a lot of fun. It tops the original Help Wanted for me. And yeah, it's kind of gonna be hard to top it because I I think the gameplay is like almost perfect. And the visuals are good. I hell I'd argue the lore is actually pretty decent and good as well. It's like it's like fake. I like it. But yeah, anything else you want to say before we move on to the next topic? Uh, I'm happy that Ballora got actually a, a chance into a VR game. Yeah. Yeah, Ballora made it. Let's go. Alright, so... Next we're going to talk about the latest, one of the late, more latest announcements of FNAF. That being the Into the Pit game, which is a game being which is a game that is being created for the 10 year anniversary of FNAF and it's based off of the Fazbear Frights story into the pit it's being made by Mega Cat Studios a new studio involved with the FNAF series and I've seen the trailer because there's a trailer which got leaked sadly but like was officially released afterwards because Scott was just like fuck it <laughs> and it looks good I'm excited. Yeah, the pixel art looks so amazing. Yeah, like, I love how back in, like, FNAF 2 to, like, 3 or 4, whatever days, like, the pixel art was, like, kind of shitty. But now, it looks, like, really fucking good. It's such a huge step up. And yeah, it's like, a fully pixel art FNAF game, I think, would, like, is, like, something that I definitely would expect from FNAF. Nowadays, FNAF is not meant to be that much scary, so, like, I'd say, honestly, it's a welcome addition so far into the FNAF series, and I think Megahead Studios is going to do a good job with the game. Now I'm actually curious of seeing, like, a FNAF-like game set in, like, 16-bit style. Yeah. Like, surviving one to five nights. Yeah, that's. I, I I don't know if it's the game's gonna be like story driven or if it's gonna have moments like that where it's like pixel art still, but you survive like a night or whatever from um into the pit spring body. Yeah. Into the pit, I must. Admit. I must admit, <laughs> I come on But yeah. And yeah, um, for the ten year anniversary special, I. I'm kind of su- I'm kind of confused and surprised that like they're based they're doing the 10 year decade anniversary of FNAF based off of a, like a Fazbear Fright story and not like I don't know something related to FNAF 1 or whatever. But hey, if it's good it, look, as long as it's good when it comes out, I don't care. As long as the game like, is yeah. good, I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, I, I expected, like, maybe some type of a remaster version or an updated version. Yeah, or, like, at least, a, like, a big video for the 10th anniversary. Yeah. But this is a nice surprise. Yeah, and it makes me wonder if, they're if like, this game is successful. They're going to make more stories. I mean, more games based off of Asmir Fright stories. Or maybe Tales from the Pizza Plex as well. Or maybe, may, just maybe, the original novel trilogy, so we can see the twist. I was going to mention game. that, dude. I'd kill to see the twist animatronics in like an official FNAF game. Yes, Twisted Wolf looks so cool. Yes, I love Twi- Twisted Bonnie's probably my favorite. 
I grew more into Twisted Wolf because some reason Twisted for Wolf like is second favorite though, don't worry. Yeah. But for some reason my brain had this stupid idea to make Twisted Wolf like the arch rival to Toy Bonnie for some reason. Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, It'd be like the Mickey Mouse to Pete, somewhat. Oh yeah, if they are gonna make like games based off of these stories, just imagine a fucking in the flesh or sea monster. I was gonna say that's my last words. In, in the flesh game win. In the flesh game, he told me everything. Game, Sea Bonnie's game. <laughs> No, imagine like you know how like Into the Pit game is just called Into the Pit. Yeah. Yo, what kind of title would be? He told me everything. <laughs> Fazgu. That'd be a good fucking. Oh yeah, they just rename it to Fazgu. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yucky. No, because I would kill the scene in the flesh game. <laughs> I d we can actually have a nice design of what Baby Springtrap looks like. Yes. <laughs> and then imagine if Matt is like designed after Matt Pat. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh no. Oh hell no. But um, speaking of another thing too, with like I've been saying with this game, you know how Into the Pit is the quote unquote time travel story. Yeah. People are just bitching about how, like, it's the time travel story that's gay in a game. When, like... See, like, I saw this theory on Twitter that I think I actually might agree with. With how it might not actually be time travel. It's just, like... Um... It's, it's just, like... Yeah, it's, like, the minds of, like, the victims. Like, and stuff like that. The memories. Yeah. Yeah, I th honestly, I, I think I actually, it's not, I think I agree with that. I don't think, it, I don't think it's confirmed or anything, but, yeah, you know, like, basically, like, Oswald is, like, the name of the protagonist, is, like, going into, um, he, um, into the pit. I mean, it's, like, is, go is, like, seeing the memories of the thing, of the kids, and it's not, like, actually time travel. Maybe the game will clear that up, I don't know. But, yeah, some people are getting pissy over the story selection honestly though into the pit makes the most sense to see for like a fnaf game though honestly so yeah i agree like ignoring the, the quote-unquote time travel it actually makes sense because it takes place at freddy's and stuff yeah if there was one the fast bird fight game i would make into a game it would be into the pit yeah and um i i wonder how like again i went back to like other stories game games i wonder if like how they i i think i think they're just adapting into the pit but like imagine if they also adapted to be beautiful and count the ways in the same game somehow yeah i don't know how that worked though yeah i was about to say yeah maybe count the ways i could see like maybe a little bit I mean, to be beautiful i don't see it Again, well, if it's story, if it's completely story driven, then I can probably see it. But like, if it's, if there's gonna be moments where it's like, survive or whatever, I do not see it with Super Beautiful, and maybe a little bit with Count the Ways. Uh, out of stock, can I could kind of see as well. Yeah, out of stock actually would be perfect. It would be like kind of like FNAF Four. I can see it as. How about Fetch? I was just thinking about Fetch. Or Lonely Freddy. And you know, the whole, like, Fetch book, actually. Because that's also, because Out of Stock is also in that. Yeah. Is, I think Lonely, I Freddy could, Lonely Freddy could work. I think someone even already made a game about Lonely Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then, uh... Fe okay, Fetch is probably the one out of the three in the Fetch book that probably would not work the most. But like, I think Lonely Friday would Lonely Friday and Out of Stock would work though a lot. Yeah. And then the ones after that, I don't really see. Maybe like Step Closer, maybe, Step or maybe, maybe Bunny yeah. Call. Oh yeah, Bunny Call would actually be like a good one too because like of that near the end where it's like I think his name's Bob. He's like surviving against like. The bunny rabbit dude. I forget his name. Okay, one thing. I forget a lot of the characters' names in fucking Fazbear Frights, even though I've like read like three fourths of the series. 
I forgot some of their names as well. I need to reread the book, so it's been a while. Yeah, but I think the protagonist of Bunny of Bunny Call is Bob. I think I remember that. Yeah, it's Bob. Yeah, I remember just now. Yeah, I just forget the name of the rabbit, even even if he even has a name. Raffle. 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 Okay. But like, I remember like like Into the Pits, Bring Bonnie, um, Eleanor. Then Freddy, Fetch, Only Freddy, Plush Rap Chaser, Oswald, like all that stuff. Um, Matt and his Baby Springtrap. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, Fazgoo and C Bonnie. <laughs> oh my god. No. I feel like Fazgoo Frights is ever hated though, because there's like genuinely like good stories in that series, but it's just like they're lumped in with like some of like the most like bizarre stories for FNAF some points that doesn't even feel like fnaf at all yeah it makes it it makes security breach more fnaf than like you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> hmm. but yeah i'm excited for the into the pit game i it looks fun i genuinely want to play and yeah and, and it's pr since it's gonna be for the 10 year anniversary and it's like a 2D game or whatever. It'll be more access be more accessible to people, to players. So it's not gonna have the same issue as Help Wanted 2. Yeah. What was I about to say? I think. Oh yeah. I'm pretty sure every fan is doing something for the 10th anniversary because it's like a big uh, number. Yeah, it's a decade. Double digits. First decade. Double digits. <laughs> But, um, yeah. <laughs> Imagine... Uh, <laughs> to get off topic for Into the Pit for a little bit, um... Apparently, they're saying that Fortnite... FNAF is gonna be added to Fortnite for the 10-year anniversary because FNAF was taken off, like, the official, like, survey or whatever for what people want in Fortnite. SpongeBob was, like, taken off, too. So, like, people are thinking those two are coming to Fortnite, which, you know what? I don't really mind. I still need I mean, to they... Fortnite to judge my final opinion on the game, but, like, hey. The only chance I'll play Fortnite if if there is a FNAF or Sonic character into the game. Yeah, and then, um, Springtrap or Dead by Daylight, maybe. Because, like, I remember there was, like, an announcement where, like, for, I forget from where, but, like, FNAF for its 10-year anniversary was, like, doing a marketing initiatives or I think that's what it's called and like it usually means crossovers or collabs so people funny think, enough I was in VC a couple of days ago and we were talking about Dead by Daylight and how characters should and should not be in the game yeah, I think Springtrap makes the most sense for Dead by Daylight I still believe that. I agree I don't think Fre I don't think Fr honestly I don't think a classic character like Freddy would work I think Springtrap makes the most sense which makes sense. He's a slasher villain. Yeah, he's literally the he's literally like an actual killer too. Like Freddy and the gang kill, but like Springtrap is directly a killer. Anyway, um, is there anything else you want to say about Into the Pit before we move on to the next topic? I since I know you already said it, but I was planning of saying this already. Into the Flash game win. <laughs> yes, maybe for like the fiftieth anniversary. <laughs> yes. The nap won't last that long, which maybe it will. I don't know. Go and fucking rewatch this for like 50 years from now, and FNAF still going, and be like, "Past me was right all along. <laughs> we were right all along, Sonic." But um, yes, yeah, so the next topic, which is um related to the books, Scott confirming the canonicity or the canon of the books. I think. Yeah, specifically Fazbear Frights and Tales from Pizza Flex. Now, Scott was kind of being trolly with it when he was trying to confirm it, but I think he, I think the books are canon. I think that's what he was trying to say. I, I think he didn't really have an answer yet, and he was just, what's that word again? Like, ambiguous? Maybe? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, no, I think he says it. I, st I still believe Scott was, like, confirming the canosity of the books, and he was just being a troll about it, so people think, hey, he's not confirming it shit. Yeah, for me, I just 
can't. I, I refuse to have in the flesh be can into the games. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, please. I love how this whole sh I love how this whole shit started too of like the fake email. Yeah. That just, that got Scott to respond. If you ever need Scott to say anything, you just gotta you just gotta impersonate him on email. Like, okay, I'll ask a fake user what's TB's gender. <laughs> yeah. Maybe fucking Mangle's gender will just make a fake Scott email and be like, yeah, Mangle is actually a girl, or Mangle is actually a boy, or Mangle is actually a yes. Or yes, Mangle is yes. Yes. And then Scott is forced oh, yeah. to, Scott is forced to go into Reddit and just be like, yo, Mingle is a, is like a yes and a no. <laughs> I, oh, I going back to the Into the Pit game, I can see Into the Pit being as canon. Oh yeah, definitely Into the Pit is probably like definitely one of the canon ones for sure. I and think because oh, yeah. of the game, there you go. Do you know another one that I think is definitely canon? What? The man in room twelve eighty. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, I think it's, since it's like especially ties to like Afton and is like like hospitalized and stuff, I think it like tie, ties with Pizza Sim and UCN and Help Wanted and stuff. That's what like how I kind of see it. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. And then Tales of the, any like Tales of the Pizza Plex books that involve the Mimic are obviously kind of canon to Mimic because Mimic is in the games and stuff. Yeah. And like they act really like, the same. Oh dear, what what about Fazgoo being canon now? Oh no, please no. Well, um Sea Bonnie's right, they were on Chicken Space. <laughs> oh yeah, they were! <laughs> oh I forgot about that. <laughs> But even that, is Chicken Space really canon? Maybe Chicken Space is canon for like arcade machines, I guess. I like, I'd say it's like the yeah. World canon. It's, yeah, I maybe think. that too. FNAF World type of canon. The weirdest canon. Yeah. But yeah, um, that's all I gotta say about Scott confirming the canosity of the books. Did he also include the Silver Eyes in that post? I don't think he does. I think he's just talking about Fazbear Frights and Tails. Yeah. I don't think he's including the, not the original not the trilogy. Because I think he clarified that one like a long time ago, where he said, like, it's canon, but it's in its own separate universe. As in, like, it's meant to, like, fill in, like, the gaps of some things in the, like, original games. Like, how Twisted Ones and sister location tie in together with like illusion discs yeah he always wondered what was that disc that Funtum Freddy had and we now have an answer yeah I think that's why I think that was like the purpose of the original novel trilogy just to like answer questions like that but yeah I, have, I got nothing else to say yeah, I, I got nothing else to say. I'll say my last uh, thoughts. Uh, again, second time I have to mention Into the Flesh. No, not Into the... Oh, God. <laughs> uh, into the Flesh? Wait. Oh, no. In... Oh, my God. Baby Springtrap goes back in time. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Fucking Baby Springtrap uses the ball pit. <laughs> Into the flesh. No, I can just see like Matt taking baby spring. No, Matt. No, Matt dies in the end. Never mind. But like, if he yeah. let, if he lived, um, he takes baby spring trap to like Freddy's, and then like, bro gets lost in the ball pit and then goes back to 1985. <laughs> oh no. And he meets. Oh god, and baby spring trap just meets into the pit spring Bonnie. Yeah, baby spring trap was the was the murder all along. Plot twist. <laughs> Can you imagine if the baby spring trap called the into the pit spring bonnie mommy? Imagine baby spring trap calls the entire FNAF floor. Aww. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Anyway, so the next topic 
is Scott Cotham, Scott Cawthorn, Scott of the Scott OC, clarifying about Doug, the canosity of Doug, like which Doug, version of Doug, like the lawyer from the FNAF movie, is canon. Everyone's favorite character. Um, so basically, for context, there's an official novel that adapts the FNAF movie, but there's like notable differences. Some of the, a lot of them involving Maxine for some reason. Like there's like there's like it's either Max or Vanessa that like is hitting on Mike or something like that. Um, well, I think wait no, I think if I remember, it's Max that hits on uh, Mike, and then like Vanessa also, but like Mike likes Vanessa. Which part of me feels like if that's the case, and I don't believe in the theory people have that Mike is an Afton. <laughs> there's no, there's no way the fucking Afton is gonna do stupid sense like that. <laughs> but then as well, um, Mike apparently insults Doug. I forget what the insult goes. And then there's the biggest one of all, which is that Doug is a pervert. He stares at the diner. He stares at Maxine's breasts. <sighs> wow. Oh That's never a thing in FNAF. Yeah, no, and it's not in the movie either. It's in the fucking novel. <laughs> so, of course, of course, is it enough? So, basically, when the FNAF movie, came, like the FNAF movie itself, the, like the actual movie came out, people loved Doug. Like, it, both ironically and unironically, they thought he was a good character. He thought it was funny, and like Doug's actor is like is cool about it too. Like he literally posts memes about Doug on his TikTok, and like so people like genuinely enjoy Doug. But then when this novel came out, where um, Doug is like a completely different character from who he is in the movie, Doug is a pervert in the novel. People FNAF fans clearly were not happy. <laughs> So, Scott Cawthon, on Reddit yet again, con basically confirmed that the movie version of Doug, the one who isn't a pervert, is the canon version of Doug, and that, for the reason why Doug is a pervert in the novel, apparently, apparently, you get a laugh out of this one, you get a kick. The, f the current version of the FNAF movie novel was not the one that Scott meant to send to Scholastic. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> want to say something, or? Yeah, you go ahead. Like, honestly, I think ever since that novel came out, I think that just ruined the Doug meme represent represent. I forgot the word. Yeah. I think also. I think another thing that ruined the meme was also that people on people found like the actor's Twitter was like following like barely legal um porn accounts. I learned that from Proxy. Thank you, Proxy, for letting me know that. I knew about it before Proxy. I knew about I knew about it before Brox, Proxy told all of us. Is that yeah. surprised, some people, some of my fans don't know this, but um, I'm actually pretty active on FNAF Twitter. <laughs> but um, yeah, so Doug memes kind of ruined both because yeah. of the actor and also because of the um, fucking novel. Novel. Yeah. But thankfully, well, at least... Scott clarified, so. At, at least he said that the books would be changed to remove that. Yeah. Now I need to get my hands on a, a, a current copy of the FNAF movie novel just so I have um, history before they don't sell anymore. <laughs> Next time I go to chapters, I'm gonna find the original version of the novel. I should order one right now <laughs> during this podcast. You, you go, you do it now. <laughs> I have, I'm gonna own a piece of FNAF history in a few months. <laughs> but anyway, um... 
Yeah, I have really nothing. Again, I have nothing else to say about this one. It's like one of it's like one of those topics where it's not like there's not a lot to say because it's basically just like a statement based off of some controversy. It's like kind of small in the grand scheme of things. Uh, for me, I think this is like I'm pretty sure this is the fastest I've seen a meme die this much, oh, this fast. Definitely. Yeah, this, a FNAF meme especially. No, because there's like it's still people fucking memeing on it's been so long to this day, and buff help. And even I was about to say, and even buff helpy man just to stay up this long. The only reason buff helpy is still relevant is because of chicken space. <laughs> yep. And even then, it's not that much of relevance. People don't people don't remember chicken space. You know that tier list I did for FNAF games? Yeah. Dude, dude had help wanted too, but didn't have chicken space. But it had Freddy in space too. And Fury is real. I wonder why. Yeah, no, these people fucking don't care about Chicken Space. Even though Chicken Space is my in my opinion, like the best out of like the three spin-off games, which do not include World and AR. So basically Freddy in Space 2, Fury's Rage, and Chicken Space. Chicken Space is the best out of the three in my opinion. I don't care what anyone says. I know <laughs> people are con people have controversy with that. There's controversy with that game, so hot take moment. <laughs> Of Kavlov takes Toy Chica. <laughs> I just had the most fun with Chicken Space out of the three, honestly. Espe mostly a, a lot of probably because of like the reference material, like the references, but like I think the gameplay is probably the best of the three, though. Yeah. But yeah. Um. Yeah, I have nothing else in regards to Scott clarifying about Douglas Doug. Dead lawyer. Yep. <laughs> yep. And oh yeah, another thing I could say, um, even ignoring like, like if you if, if you, when, I just ignore the actor and stuff, and I, I just I still enjoy the character of Doug. Like Doug is like a highlight of the FNAF movie for me, so I don't care if the actor is in the barely legal porn. Honestly, I just like the character. I like the memes too. Better call Doug. <laughs> yes. Anyway, um, the next topic is the FNAF Plus AI shit show. Oh boy. So this is like something that happened in like November of 2023. One of the months we missed out on for the podcast. So we're talking about somewhat old news here. So basically, um, there was somebody that took their hand in making FNAF Plus like making their own FNAF Plus which was a cancelled fanverse game by Fistnum because of controversy that I talked about in the first episode of Tyler Podcast Redux the August 2023 episode and um yeah basically the, the fucking apparently there was an AI a, a phone guy AI voice game which was which um, is controversial because Scott Cawthon has and other people associated with him in the FNAF series have gone on record to say that they are against AI hell if they were for AI the mimic would not even be a thing because <laughs> the mimic is literally I... like AI oh. so yeah so basically this game used um, Scott Cawthon's voice for like a Scott Cawthon's AI, like an AI voice for Scott Cawthon for the phone guy of this FNAF Plus remake, and Scott Cawthon got involved, and the game had to be taken down. And honestly, I I didn't even get to play it. Honestly, I wasn't even interested because my thing is like, even though it's even though Fisnum is not allowed to work on it. FNAF Plus would not be the same if it was not made by Fistnum. I think Fistnum had to make FNAF Plus because it was his vision. So that's why I just do not support remakes of FNAF Plus. I think Fistnum was like the definitive developer for the game. Yeah, I, I agree that no one should uh, continue FNAF Plus without Phil. Yeah. Of really against that. This is like vision, so yeah. And, it, and from what I heard, anyway, people said the game was shit anyway, so <laughs> I'm just gonna believe them on it. 
Oh yeah, and uh, even a couple of YouTubers were asked by Scott to take a their videos down. Oh yeah, that too. Um, gameplay of the game current. Well, there may be like smaller YouTubers that just have their gameplays up, but like people like Daco and Fusion. Did Daco play it? Yeah, he did. Yeah, okay. I knew Fusion did. So like Fusion and Daco, their gameplays are gone. So Bye. yeah, goodbye. <laughs> um. Me, so basically, moral of the story, I, I am not gonna, I am not gonna play FNAF Plus remakes. But if you want a higher chance of me playing them, don't use AI, <laughs> AI voices. Uh, I will say I'm heavily against AI voices, just mainly because that just loses people's jobs. Now the the thing is, um, I think if it's something like the like fucking U.S. presidents. I think that that's fine because it's it's, it's not a fucking like creator. Yeah, I would. Yeah, creator. I was going to say that. Yeah, but if it's like a like a like a like a average person like Scott Cawthon, I don't support it. Yeah, or a voice actor like yeah. Kellen Goff. Yeah, that too. And I think Andy Field said something once too because someone used like Andy Field's AI or whatever. I even uh, Joe, who voiced Mr. Hippo, said that a Roblox game used his AI voice. Oh yeah, that too. That's, that's shitty. I'm pretty sure that was even Forgotten Memories. Oh really? Uh, and that uh, Roblox game is popular. It, oh yeah, I've heard, I I need it. I still need to play that. I've heard it's like really good. Yeah. But yeah. Um. So. Basically, Scott Cawthon and a lot of the voice actors for the FNAF series are against AI. And yet again, like I said, if they were not against it, the mimic would not be a plot point in the FNAF lore. <laughs> so the mimic. The mimic. So yeah. So since they're against AI, um, yeah, FNAF Plus remaster that didn't need to exist is taken down for its use of Scott Cawthon phone guy AI voice acting. Anything else you mm -hmm. want to say about this topic? I don't have anything else to say either. It's like pretty straightforward. It's okay to do the presidents but not voice actors. Yeah, that's how I see it. You can do you can do fucking I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say their names. I don't care enough. But like if you want to do the presidents, go ahead. That shit's that shit's actually funny in my opinion. I actually like those videos. But I'm actually a big fan of a uh, presidents play horror games channel. Yeah, that stuff's good. But like, I, I I do not support AI voices when they're being used to replicate voices of voice actors or like just daily normal people like Scott Cawthon because like. That could be used for like bad intent. Yeah. Especially since AI voices have like upgraded over time to sound more genuine and, and like actually like human, which is scary to think about. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't like AI voices. They're scary. Dude, once I like reach past fifty thousand subs, there's gonna be an AI voice in me. <laughs> oh boy. Then there's gonna also be an AI voice of Tiller and Dapper and Mangle. <laughs> fucking Floyd. I was about to say Floyd. <laughs> yeah, so. Hell, even Bunny might even get a fucking AI voice. You can't take away my voice. <laughs> You'll get an AI voice. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can't get my voice. Ah. First I'm equal, and now me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah. Yeah, it voices poopy unless it's, um, presents. Jesus. You ready for the next topic? Oh boy, I've been waiting for this topic. Oh yeah, I bet you have. The next topic being FNAF Survival Crew. Oh Oof. god. Oof. <laughs> course so basically if you if you don't know what this is 
this was a FNAF Roblox game that was officially licensed by Scott Cawthon. This released for like an hour, a few days after the release of Help Wanted 2. People were like praising Help Wanted 2 for being the fina best FNAF game. And then a few days later, something that is could be considered one of the worst FNAF games released. And it was only up for an hour because of backlash. So like, so yeah. Well, mainly because Scott said because the game was accidentally released early. Yeah, that too. And um, the people that are working... I forget the name of the people working on the game. But, like, they're they're, uh, like, ma they're working on the hard on the game. They have to redo the game. Holy shit. And so, yeah. like they're Hopefully they make it so it's actually, like, good. Because I'm going to be honest, I did get to play it. I actually did get to play it. In that hour, it was available, and it was shit. It was just a dead by daylight ripoff, honestly. Yeah, I, I'm really glad they're restarting from scratch because I do see potential in this, sort of. Yeah, even for an even for a Roblox game, the visuals are kind of shit too. I hope they fix their models. Those models look trash. Yeah, they are trash. And I think there was like fan content in the game too. And, oh yeah, there's that iconic Freddy like running image. Yeah. Like in an official fin in an official FNAF product. Like, oh my god. And it's strange because I thought of a official FNAF Roblox collaboration, but only as like yeah. a light blue sky wish. I just didn't expect it to actually happen. Yeah, and then it turned out to be shit. I thought like maybe it would be like Forgotten Memories, where it's like good. Um, do you know that one FNAF Roblox game I play with my friend? It's like FNAF multiplayer mashup, something like that. I played that a lot too. That's like. I mean the the know. one that's almost like UCN, where uh, more people control the animatronics and the other play the uh, night guard. Yeah, that one. I'm pretty sure I played that with you with the uh, nightly streams and the 24 hour stream. No, that's a different game. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one is like better. It has like skins and stuff. Bear 5 even makes uh, it in as a skin. And 39's a skin. <laughs> yes! <laughs> but yeah. Porn money. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so like, I thought it'd be like those kind of games where it's like actually like fun and enjoyable and good. But no, um, of course, it's like stolen assets, shitty models, rip off of Dead by Daylight. I, again, I hope the dev team, like, learned and they're actually going to make a quality game out of it, considering since a lot of people, especially myself, were quick to criticize it. Dude, I think it was actually I, worse than FNAF AR. Oh my, I can't believe it, a game that's worse than AR. Yeah, but then watch as, like, the game comes out and it's, like, actually somewhat, like, Decent. It doesn't even need to be like decent. It could just be like mediocre, but it's just better than FNAF AR. <laughs> I just hope that the gameplay would be more unique. Yeah, there needs to be more than just Dead by Daylight and shit. Yeah, that's my one hope with the game. Yeah, it's just FNAF Dead by Daylight for free. But um, yeah, wasn't there like a thing? with like the dev team that was like controversial too on like a discord server with them yeah like they do like porn images oh god of course that's like something that's been um relevant for like that's something that's like relevant. why is it why is it always like fnaf people that always get like fucking outed for something because like more importantly why why is it scott that always hires the wrong people yeah, he's like the Doug actor is like is is it follows barely with porn accounts, and the survival crew dev team are in the porn, of course, and then like um certain porn. Hey, fizzy and pinky pills. And then fucking it was reveal it was like it, apparently the other day, like this week, Jason Blum was apparently found out to be following an end wokeness Twitter account. What? Yeah. <laughs> like, bro. What the fuck is going on in the FNAF space, dude? <laughs> this is just more material for my FNAF controversy iceberg, too. Uh, the sequel. When's the sequel? 
I want to I want to make it after the FNAF movie iceberg, but like I know people will say it's too soon, so I need it. Uh, I might do it after like another iceberg. But anyway, back on topic. Um, so yeah, survival crew. I I hope I see the promise in it, so I hope it does turn out like good and stuff. It probably is not going to be like a favorite of mine. I don't even. Okay, here's my thing. I don't even know if I'd consider it like an actual like FNAF game. I consider like stuff like Chicken Space and Friday Space 2 and Fury's Rage and AR as FNAF games, but like I don't see myself considering Survival Crew as like official game because I see it more as like a collab or like like a, so, something like let's say FNAF was added to for, like Friday was added to Fortnite or Spring Travel was added to Day by Daylight. I'd see it more in the lines of that, where it's not like a game, it's like a collab of another game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, actually, I heard that SpongeBob is getting a, a game on Roblox. Oh, I did hear. I heard about that too. It's funny because um, SpongeBob was removed from the Fortnite poll along with FNAF, so I think it might be coming to Fortnite too with FNAF. Is. <laughs> oh. I mean, both are popular, so it makes sense. Both are good choices, in my opinion. Yeah. I love. I love both FNAF and SpongeBob. But anyway, so yeah, Survival Crew was not good when I played it, but I think it can be good. They just need maybe I'll, I think it's planned to come out this year for the 10 year anniversary. Not on the the day probably, but just like around or for 10 years. So yeah. yeah. Is there anything else you want to say before we move on to the last topic? Yes. They added Toy Freddy and Toy Chica, but they did not add my freaking boy into the game. Yep, of course. <laughs> you and your Toy Bonnie. Yes. Anyway, um... The last topic is a topic that isn't necessarily FNAF related, but it's tied to somebody who is associated with the FNAF space and FNAF fandom is someone that if you're watching this you have definitely you definitely know who it is and you've read the title it's probably gonna be one of the topics like put in the title of the fucking podcast <laughs> like you know how like like the titles of these these podcast videos on youtube i just put like three of the topics in parentheses yeah I, this is gonna be one of them <laughs> i need the, i need the clucks man <laughs> but um you know, i just heard a clucking sound <laughs> Jesus Christ. But anyway, um, the last topic is MatPat retiring. Um, so, basically, yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but MatPat is retiring. The reason being is so he can spend more time with his family, which, you know what, I am actually proud of him for. I'm happy for him. Like, he has even said himself that he put work before family for so long and i'm glad he is finally doing what he thinks is best and for the record he doesn't retire until march so i bet like do you want to bet that like so you know how like um obviously there's been a few more game theories that came out after the retirement announcement and, yeah like, matt pat's talking obviously in them do you want to bet that like 50% or 60% of the kids that like watch the retirement video and they watch this new video and they hear MadPat, they're like in the comments, I thought you retired and they just completely miss her. Oh her yeah. Part. <laughs> I bet I, after this podcast, I'm going to go to the comments of that video of like the next game theory, which I think is, isn't it a Bam Bam theory? Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna go in the comments and just see just a bunch of kids just be like, I thought you retired, even though he said he wouldn't until March. March 9th. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez, speaking of Bam Bam 6, did you know Bam Bam 6 came out the same day when Survival Crew was uh, announced? Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I remember now. Oh, God. Oh, uh, boy, two shitty things happening in one day. Of course, I was in school when this shit was happening. <laughs> I have Roblox on my phone, so I got to play Roblox in fucking school. <laughs> Playing fucking survival crew when I could be studying for stuff. <laughs> I have my program yeah. straight. <laughs> but yeah, Matt Pat retiring. Um, 
It's unfortunate, even though it's for a good reason. He deserves. He, if he if he wants to retire, he deserves to retire. He's not he's not forced to do this. And even then, he's still gonna be kind of be there. He's he's gonna like be in the background. He might appear in like GT lives and stuff. But like, yeah, no. oh, like Scott, sort of. Yeah, basically like Scott. And the thing is like um. And speaking of, I saw that Scott Cawthon commented on the retirement video, and he like the pink comment. That was really heartwarming. Yeah. And wholesome. And I think people need to know that not every like every YouTuber has to stop at one point. Yeah, like I'm gonna be done with YouTube someday too. Like, not for a long while, honest, unless I get canceled. But like, <laughs> even then. If it's not serious, I don't give a shit. Hey, but like, yeah, there's gonna be an end eventually. So whether that be again, I get canceled for the serious, or I die, or like whatever, I, I, whatever. Like, there's always everything comes to an end, and and this is the end of Matt Pat's um, career of hosting Game Theory. It is sad, obviously, because um, Matt Pat was like Matt Pat is. I don't care what you say. Matt Pat is like the voice of Game Theory. He is the de he's the definition of Game Theory. Matt Pat is Game Theory. That is always going to be the case. Matt Pat made Matt. Yes, there's other people that work for Game Theory. I, I always knew that, but like Matt Pat was the voice everyone heard. Matt Pat is the person everyone knows Game Theory for. Matt Pat is Matt Pat. Game Theory would not be the same without Matt. That's why it is, like, sad that this is happening. Yeah. But, like... But at the same time, dude made his bag. He, he, dude has enough money. Dude, Matt Pat... The Game Theory has, like... has like There's, like, four or five fucking channels, right? I say five because GT Live. And then, like... I was about to say. So, like... He, and he makes a lot of money because he has a lot of subscribers on all those channels. So he's making, he's, he's made his back. He can basically kind of live without all the fucking, he can live the rest of his life now, basically. So, <laughs> so he's made his back. He's doing what he thinks is best now. That That's a W life, honestly. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud for him. Same. Yeah, he it literally has a kid too. Ollie, yeah. Like, Ollie's, Ollie's cool. Yeah. Um, I'm still interested to know how he knows more FNAF floor than that. Pat. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned yeah, that. The new video. guy? Well, he's not new. He's been on the channel for uh, for a while now. Yeah. But um, yeah. It is sad to see Matt Pat go, but if it's what he wants to do, if it's what he wants to do, then he's allowed to do it. And I'm happy. It's for like him. the first and only YouTuber that I watch to this day that announces retiring. Yeah. He's not, and the thing is, Matt Pat's not like the only like YouTuber who's like retiring. Um, fucking. There was that one guy who was retiring. Jack Semtica hinted to retirement. He didn't retire. He hasn't announced anything, but like he's kind of, kind of hinted to it on Twitter. Um, S Stampy technically retired. Like you know, Stampy like Minecraft, right? Yeah. Yeah. He the orange of, cat. He kind of retired. Like his most popular series. Like a lot of people are leaving. And there's like conspiracy theorists and sh theories and shit about that, which I'm just I, I don't fucking care. I mean, mainly because YouTube being like a bad uh, place is kind of a solid reason. I, I think it's, I think it's, I, th I feel like they, it's because like of the YouTube shorts and stuff taking over like the content focus of YouTube. Like, you know, like the fucking Skibby Toilet and then like Family Guy over Subway Surfer footage type of shorts. I think that stuff is like the reason why a lot of these people are quitting because people would rather watch like the short stuff than like... Um, genu like actual content like they're making is like people nowadays have like the attention span of a fucking five year old so yeah dude our generation's fucked 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't gonna survive in school either. I I I survive. Did. I will. In a, I will survive in a few months. I graduate. In May. Yeah. I'm almost there. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, March 9th is gonna be a. March 9th, right? I think it's the 9th. I know it's March. Yeah, it's March 9th. March 9th. It's the 9th. March 9th is going to be a day in, that's going to live in infamy. <laughs> As, oh, one of the biggest legends on YouTube is going to be leaving us. And um, yeah, it's unfortunate, but again, if it's what he wants, if, if that's what Matt wants to do, it's what he wants to do. So I'm not going to judge him for it. I'm going to respect his, his decision. I already do. Some days I feel like I'm going to leave. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, anything else you want to say before um, we conclude the podcast? Yes. Uh, thank you, Matt Pat, for making the Sansa's Nest me- uh, fairy. Yep, to the point where it's in the FNAF movie. <laughs> thank you for getting Undertale and Earthbound in the FNAF movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Anyway, so yeah, that was this month's episode of the podcast. There, we're gonna go back doing an episode every month, like I was supposed to for November and December. But of course, re- the reasons I already stated in the beginning didn't. I didn't. So yeah, but um, yeah, this yeah. month's episode. This was fun. I, I enjoyed myself today. Yeah, we got to talk. Oh, you have fun too. We got to talk about stuff we liked. We got to complain about stuff we didn't like. We got to shit on people and stuff. That it was a good time. <laughs> Baby spring trap. Baby spring trap. Yep. <laughs> Baby spring trap. Going back in time to start the FNAF floor. <laughs> that that'd be like a perfect April Fool's prank. Just like make like an in the like for April Fools. Just make an in the flesh game, and like. The ending is like it has like the normal in the flesh ending, but then it continues, and then it's like he goes to the fucking time traveling ball pit and just like goes back in time and literally starts the fucking FNAF floor or whatever. And how come the uh, baby spring jump wasn't in Chicken Space Free? Yeah. You know how like okay, not to br- I hate bringing up Dormant in this, but you know how in the original it like portrays Garvey like paying Michael to do. Like it's called the bite of eighty three. Just replace Garvey with fucking baby spring trap. No, wait. <laughs> then it'd start with an floor. Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, yeah. So in the description below will be like what's usually there if you're watching this on YouTube. I don't know if I'm. Ex- I might expand this to Spotify. I don't know yet. Too. I swear too much. I don't know. <laughs> But, um, yeah. Did you enjoy yourself today as a water pumpkin? Yes, and I'll let, and I'll say my final words. On the time we are recording this, on the 29th of January, I want everyone who watches this to go buy Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 when it comes out. Hey, I, I, I'll, I'll, I don't mind. I don't mind. I'll, I'm, I plan on playing it. I just, I need to replay. I need to, like, do that stream on Chapter 2. Yeah, since that game is coming out tomorrow. Oh, it's coming out tomorrow? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have to wait a bit to play it then. But anyway, yeah. Um, th- thank you guys for listening or watching. I don't know what you're doing. You could be you could be probably just, like, glued to the screen just watching what is basically just the same image, but, like, the image background changes after like every like 30 minutes <laughs> but yeah um hope you guys enjoyed i'll see y'all in the, the next um thing that i do and if you're a podcast only person see you next month toodles see you later <laughs>